What's up guys, it's Alex, and today I've got a highly requested video. This is a video that a lot of you guys ask a lot of questions about, um, or this is a topic you guys ask a lot of questions about, and you know, it's something that I try to answer the questions as best as I possibly can, but it's such a, um, I guess, extensive um, topic that it's hard for me to do that. But today we're going to talk about my small body crankbait setup. So. When I'm talking small body crankbaits, I'm talking crankbaits that are anywhere from, you know, three inches, those that are going to be in that bandit, shad wrap um, range of baits. Um, these are to be the kind of baits that I've been fishing a lot for the past few months even. Um, this is a technique that I start in the fall, I fish throughout the winter, throughout the spring, almost to the spawn. Um, then, you know, even during the spawn um, and, and post spawn is when I get the big crankbaits out. Um, which that's just a totally different deal. It's a totally different, you know, setup. But right now I want to just talk about these these small body crankbaits like this. Um, <clears throat> this one in particular is, that's like a Bandit 300. And this is really the type of, of crankbait that I'm going to be talking about today is just this small bodied mid-range diving crankbait. So, First things first, let's get into the crankbaits that I like to throw. A lot of people ask me, Alex, you know, what's what brand crankbait, what brand crankbait? I'm not associated with any of the brands in this box. Um, I simply use their product because I have a lot of confidence in them. So I have three different crankbait boxes. These are all filled with what I consider medium diving small body crankbaits. The first two are the 200 size ones. These are the crankbaits that are a little bit smaller. Um, in this box, I also have flat sides and square bills. These crankbaits are going to run from zero to about six feet. The next box is filled with what I consider 300 size crankbaits. These are crankbaits that are going to run a little bit deeper. These are your 300 bandits. These are your 3XDs and wiggle warts, those types of things. Those baits are going to run from that six to about 12 foot range. And then I have a box full of shad wraps or any shad wrap balsa um, glass wrap style baits these are those baits that have very very tight wobbles a shad profile and they're going to run anywhere from you know two to 12 feet and really with these baits the 200 and the 300 size i'm going to fish in a lot of the same situations just because they run deeper doesn't mean that i can't fish them in shallower water if you hold your rod tip up fish them a little more carefully you're obviously going to be able to fish them through those areas so First things first, let's just get through these boxes. I'll kind of show you some of the baits that I like to use. This one right here is my uh, 200 size box. Um, this is going to have, like I said, my wiggle warts, my square bills. Obviously, one that I use just right off the, the back that's a name brand is a Storm Wiggle Wart. Um, this is one of my favorite baits to throw. Um, it's caught me a lot of fish, especially this winter. Um, fall and winter has definitely caught me a lot of fish. I'm going to go with crawl colors, natural colors. Um, I don't fish a lot of shag colors in the wiggle warp just because I've not found them to be as effective as other patterns. Um, these methylate bright orange crawl patterns, they're just a great representation of crawdads. Um, they really dig on the bottom. They float up uh, pretty quickly so you can work them over structure, all those kinds of things. The next thing is a bandit, and I'm going to fish a bandit 2 and 300 size both. So in both the boxes, you guys are going to see a ton of bandits, and that's what this whole box is almost completely compromised of, is um, or comprised of, is bandits. Um, they've got a lot of colors. They've always been a fish catcher for me. Now that they started working with a new company, they have super quality hooks. Um, so it's just a bait that you can go buy, get out of the box, and fish and not have to worry about it. Uh, the next thing is a Strike King. And, you know, I have more brands than just what I'm covering in this video, but these are the brands that I use the most. This is what I'm usually going to tie, have tied on. I have other things for different situations um, that's just got a little bit of different wobble or a little bit different tweak that gives me just a little bit more confidence in um, a different situation. But then a Strike King, just a KVD 2.5, um, you know, citrus shad, 
square bill. I mean, and I've got a bunch of KVD square bills in here. I even have um, some of these magnum size ones. Um, this one is really one I'm going to throw on a bigger rod than what I'm going to show you guys here in a minute. But that just, you know, gives you a general idea of what I'm using. I obviously have Berkeley's, I have Storm's, I have uh, Bagley's, I, I've got a little bit of everything, but that is just my confidence go-to baits. Now in this box, like I said, 300 bandits. There's going to be a lot of bandits in this box, um, but there's a couple baits in here that, that I don't have in the 200 size box which is a Rapala. Um, this is a DT-10, but I'll use a DT-6 and a DT-10. And really, depending on the line size, you can get these baits a lot deeper than what they're suggested. The DT-6, you can get to about 10 feet if you're fishing it on a light enough line, which we'll go over here in just a second. And then I also have, if there's one in the box, and there probably isn't, um, oh, right here, a Strike King 3XD. And it looks, um, this is a Strike King 3XD dives up to that you know uh, 10 to 12 foot range this is a bandit 300 so you can see very similar but all at the same time two very different actions um, two very different baits both high quality baits so like i said i'm using strike king i'm using bandit and i'm using rapala now for the shad wrap box obviously the name implies what pretty much this whole box is comprised of and that is shad wrap shad wraps and um a little secret bait um that i don't talk about much but just i'm usually fishing your standard number seven size shad wrap uh, is a bait that gets the job done in those colder uh, water situations just because of that tight wobble um it is made out of balsa wood it suspends well and then i'm also going to be fishing a glass wrap which is just a little um variation on the shad wrap it's the shad wrap body but this thing is made out of plastic and it comes with glass beads uh, hence the name glass wrap so this actually has rattles in it versus these solid balsa wood baits that do not so it's just really another take on the same body style bait it's got the same wiggle but you're adding rattles um which just give it a little different um, look in the water and really guys there's no specific rhyme or reason to throw and stuff i'll usually start with a bait and cycle through a few um, and figure out what the fish are wanting because there's some days they want a 3xd there's some days they want a dt10 there's some days they want a bandit um there's some days they want a wiggle wart and literally you'll catch you know three to one you know three to one over somebody else using a wiggle wart on a day that they want a wiggle wart versus the day that they want a bandit um, obviously the other day the last video I posted of me fishing this was the bait that did all the work you guys can see thing is beat beat up pretty good the fish were just absolutely wearing it out just that standard red and orange that crawl pattern um, and that's something you know guys like you've seen I have a bunch of different colors I have crawls I have bait fish I have chartreuses and browns I have uh, chartreuse is an orange. I've got one in there. It's called a parrot that's pink and purple. I mean guys It's just really dependent on water clarity and what the fish are eating on if they're eating on crawdads If you have one throw up a crawdad in the live well or if you just know it's that time of year You know winter months cold months that they eat on crawdads start with a crawdad color and work from there now rod reel and line setup this is Probably one of the most important components to a crankbait setup now for me, I'm using a Bass Pro Shops um, cranking stick. This is a composite rod. It is a seven foot medium um, fast action. This rod has a lot of parabolic bend. And what that does <clears throat> is it helps to really drive those hooks in instead of ripping those hooks out. If you use a rod that's a little too heavy, a lot of the times um, you'll rip a, a hook out of a fish or if you get them up next to the boat and they're really digging on you, really digging on you, they'll pull off. I had a fish pull off the other day in the video that I posted, which I'll leave a link for down below. And, you know, I didn't have the fish hooked good, but you could see through most of that fight. One of the reasons I got the fish up to the side of the boat and could, and could get through all those surges is that parabolic bend of that rod. And then I got it matched up with a 6-3 gear ratio reel. And really, you want that lower gear ratio. 5-1, I wouldn't go higher than a 6. That is just going to keep you from... Number one, wearing yourself out if you're, you know, really cranking, you know. Um, number two, it gives you a lot more leverage on the bait, and it gives you a lot more torque on the bait as well. Then when you hook a fish, it gives you more torque. 
Line size, I'm going eight to 12 pound. Um, eight if I'm wanting my bait to get deeper, if I'm not having to fish as much uh, structure such as lay downs, rocks, and those kinds of things, and I can know that I'm not gonna break fish off if I get hung up in a tree. Uh, 10 to 12 if I'm fishing that more, um, you know, heavily structured areas, more rocks, more lay downs, things I know I'm going to be beating crankbaits off things. Um, one great example is a video I posted a few weeks back. I'll leave the link down there too so you can, guys can go check it out because the best way for me to explain this to you is for me to explain it to you this way and then for you to go watch those videos and see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, there's a video a couple weeks back where we were parallel on the brink, really close, throwing it way up, like up next to trees, all those kinds of things, really beating these crankbaits out of those places. And I was fishing 10 pound line just so I knew I had a little more strength there, a little more abrasion resistant. Um, brand of line, I'm going P-Line CXX. Again, not, not any affiliation with those guys. I just have an extreme amount of confidence in, in that brand. Then one thing um, that, that I do to all my crankbaits, and this was a tip that I put in a quick tip video not too long ago, that is add a snap. Um, let's see if we can get it. The, uh, no, turn for me. There we go. Uh, that is to add a snap and like I said in that tip video It's just going to give that bait more range of motion motion Which means that you don't have to tune the bait as much and the fish aren't going to have as much leverage on you So <clears throat> that is it. This is this is how I crank um, you guys know this is something that I do a lot. Um, I get a lot of questions about it just because it is something that I enjoy doing. It's a power fishing technique. I'm a huge power fisherman. Um, and as the water starts to warm up, we start to transition into that post-spawn time when I can get the big 8X, 10XDs out, my big cranking stick. We'll do a video similar to this where I go over the kinds of baits I like to throw, which is a much more narrow um, spectrum, much more narrow color spectrum as well. But it's still a video I think you guys would want to see but that is it on my small body medium diving crankbaits i mean guys this is this is what i do this is how i do it so as always guys thank you for watching if you got any questions or comments leave them in the comment section down below if you're new to my channel make sure and hit that subscribe button go check out some more of my videos um go check me out on all my social media it's alex for fishing for everything all the links are down below download those links are links to my partners like lucky tackle box and Beast Coast. Go click some of those links. It'll really help me out. And be on the lookout, Lucky Tackle Box. I did a video for them um, covering a small body crankbait that you guys are going to be getting in next month's Lucky Tackle Box where I break down rigging, retrieval, and location. And it really goes in depth on locations that I look for while I'm fishing baits like this that would make this video way too long. But as always, guys, you're sweet. Thanks for watching.